Once upon a time, in a nerfy galaxy far, far away. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I've discovered nerf. It's amazing, it's amazing. I've got this maverick, it shoots really far. It's amazing, it's amazing. On your little desert planet, you discover the world of modding. And you see your favourite internet nerf modder. Hey kid. Hokey recons and ancient mavericks are no match for a modified blaster at your side. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I've got to have one of those. Unfortunately, you are on the planet that is furthest from the centre of the universe. What do you do? You need... a wise old master to show you the ways of the nerf modding. Mmm! About balance it is, yes! And that is the subject of today's video. Hi, it's Tom here from FDS, and today we are going to look at balance uh, in relation to electrical modding. And as you can see, I've got all the components of a typical flywheel system here uh, laid right bare. So we've got your motors on this side, we've got your wiring loom, and on this side we have your power supply. Obviously there are components in this bit in the middle, so there will be switches and other things, but we're going to ignore those for the time being because this video is all about balance, specifically balancing your uh, current requirements from your motors to your battery discharge. Now I've seen lots of posts about this lately and obviously we've had a rise in uh, more people being prepared to do electrical mods and I think there are some serious concerns about the way some of this is being done. So I'm going to illustrate it as easy as possible because we have some Lego out today. I'm going to use Lego to show you guys how it all works. So we're going to start with a basic system. Okay you take your level one mod and you have just bought yourself a a shiny new flywheel blaster and you immediately go out and buy some horrible truss fires to go in it. So you have two truss fires, you have your standard wiring loom and you have your standard motors. Obviously there's a thermosistor in there but because we're only using two that's not going to trip but the thermosistor is there to protect the wiring loom in the event of an overload so if you were to put four in there the thermosistor will trip and it will protect your motors and your thin wire. So we can now look at current demands. Now all of this is all choked up and the motors are standard so those motors are going to be able to pull five amps. All the figures for these um, have come from the motor data sheets and those have been calculated by SSGT. There's a link to them in the description box should you wish to go and check out some of the motor data sheets. The stock ones have come from the uh, figures off the rapid strike and a little bit of calculation. So you've got your two motors pulling five amps and you have your trusty trusty fires over here. Now on a good day a truss fire will be able to put out three amps. So that means that on the current side you have five amps being drawn and your wiring loom in between your wire is rated for 5 amps. So you have 5 amps current draw maximum, 5 amps in the wiring loom, but oh dear, only 3 amps in the truss fires. So that leaves the truss fires being overdrawn by 2 amps. Not good in an unprotected Lyco, so you're already over discharging those, that will result in short battery duration and poor cell life. So that's why we don't use truss fires, so you grow some brains and you throw away your truss fires. So obviously your current demand stays the same from the motors and your uh, wiring loom stays the same but you grow some brains and you go out and you buy some IMR batteries. Now IMR batteries are lithium manganese and they're designed to be able to discharge a higher current than a Lyco cell and on a good day we can get 8 amps from our two little IMR batteries over there. So we now have 8 amps on the battery side. 5 amps on the wiring and 5 amps on the motors. So that is really good, we're liking that, that's balance. You've got a little bit of margin for error because you've got spare capacity. So if in doubt you want spare capacity on the side of your battery because you don't want to over discharge high current batteries of any description. So that is a standard 2 motor system. Now what if you are running a rapid strike, I'm going to borrow this. So if you are running a rapid strike and you consider something like this to be modifying a rapid strike, which I know some people do, God knows why. There's your modded rapid strike. You've got an Emigad, Matev, C battery. So you've taken the C battery tray, you've put some C battery adapters, or you've just done that. I've seen that done before. And now you have um, three motors in the system, and you've got your stock wiring loom. So your stock wiring loom can only take five amps. Now you've got um, 5 amps um, for the standard motors and you've also got 2 amps freewheeling for the other one. So you've got um, a potential there of at least a 5 amp stall um, with those but 
Um, in the rapid strike, you do get greater demand on the motors because when you are jamming higher rates of fire through those than you will in a strife in full auto, you're cycling darts through and you're stalling them often. Now, in a stock system, the current demand is restricted by the fact that there's a C-cell at the end. And the C-cell can only put out so much juice. And when you think about how long your C-cells lasted when you first got your rapid strike and you were like, wow, I want to play with it, they didn't last very long your C-cell alkalines, and that's because they were being asked to do an awful lot of work to supply these three little motors, um, and particularly the flywheel motors. So I think, although it says um, five watts of energy consumption on the rapid strike at six volts, if you are allowing higher current from the motor uh, for the batteries, you're gonna spin these a little bit faster. I think the current draw for these is more like to be seven amps from those, and maybe up to 10 amps with five each at stall, which I don't think is unreasonable for a stock motor. So if you imagine two fives at stall, so we imagine a worst case scenario, you have a jam from some horrible bendy dart and you keep your finger on the rev trigger whilst running the uh, pusher in the hope of clearing it through the flywheels. You've just taken five, 10, 11, 12 amps, and you're asking the battery side, which remember can supply eight, to give you 12. So you're then in a situation where you've got an over discharge of four. However, obviously your thermosistor is here. So if your load increases too much, your thermosistor trips out because it gets too hot. But that's more related to voltage because as the voltage rises, the resistance rises. And as the resistance rises, the heat rises and that trips the thermosistor. So you're unlikely to trip the thermosistor just from over demand of current. So there is a basic system. Let's say that you've actually rewired your rapid strike and you want to rewire your rapid strike. You've cleared out all the current um, pathways and that now pretty much doubles your current output, maybe a little bit more. You could probably get, you can quite happily take 15 amps through that wire. So if we imagine a little extra pile there and your current demands from your motors will stay the same at 12. So balance, balance. But now because you've cleared the thermosistor out, you've got zero protection whatsoever. You've also allowed your motors to really breathe through your wiring room. They can really pull. You've taken out a lot of resistance and unnecessary load. Those motors will now definitely pull five amps each. The uh, flywheel motor, not so much because it's overcoming less inertia and it's operating a gearbox. So you're still talking then about five, 10, 12, and you can still only put out eight from here. So you're still in a four overload situation with stock motors. Let's assume that you go and put two Rhino motors onto your um, flywheels and you keep your, you want to keep your little tiny cells in there. Now your pusher will stay the same at about two or three amps. However, if you are gonna go with those, those Rhino motors, now you'll obviously have a third high discharge battery. Remember, don't mix battery chemistries, that's pretending to be an IMR. So in your Rhinos, you will have 10 amps draw, and your pusher will be two amps draw, and your system will be able to supply eight. So you now have 22 amps from eight. So that is gonna be a problem, because now you're really out of balance. So rapid strikes, your other thing to consider is your tray springs. These little tray springs are designed for the stock system of five amps. You're gonna take a coiled, plain gauge steel spring and you're gonna ask it to take 20 amps. Now, I don't think that's very bright. There's also two additional springs in the blaster that go on this end and you're gonna be putting them in two. So you're gonna have a total of four springs that are all nice and thick and don't conduct very well and you're gonna put 20 amps through them.